This video is for informational purposes only. We disclaim all warranties, and if you choose to adapt any of the methods in this video, you are voluntarily assuming the risk. Meaning, I, or my company, Aquastar Distributors, will not be liable for any damages of any kind arising from the use of this information for your own purposes. When it comes to fixing your vacuum flush toilet, the job can get a little messy. I highly recommend that you hire a trained authorized professional and you go off and enjoy your RV rather than getting a little dirty. But if you insist on working on your own system, this video will be extremely helpful. We're gonna dive deep into the pump. How you doing? I'm Jay with Aquastar Distributors. We're Dometic's oldest and largest vacuum flush distributor. We normally service the marine industry. However, over the past several years, we've been getting more and more calls from RV owners about how to fix and maintain their vacuum flush system. Today, we have the pleasure of working on this beautiful 2018 Fleetwood Bounder. We're gonna jump inside. We're gonna show you how to operate the system, how it works, how to service it, and we're even gonna jump inside the bunk and show you how to rebuild the vacuum pump. So the reason they went with a vacuum flush is because in a gravity system, the holding tank would have to be directly below or very close to the toilet. With vacuum flush, we can move the waste up to 75 feet if we needed to. So that's why they chose to go with a vacuum flush system versus a conventional gravity. They were able to push the envelope of design, whereas you would never be able to have your head here. So proper operation. Okay, we need the green light. On this particular model, we have the DVS-01 panel. Green means go, red means do not flush. So proper operation, you would energize your system, take care of your business. Doesn't matter if the toilet seat is up or down when you flush. Uh, very important, if you are going to put solids into the system, we want you to pick up on the pedal, add water, then press and hold this way we get a nice rim wash you then release the pedal and it is supposed to slam back up we want that half ball to close very nicely okay that's proper operation i'm not sure if you can hear it right now in the background but the pump is running regenerating the vacuum we have a red do not flush light so if you were still sitting on the toilet taking care of your business you would want to wait until that light goes green Okay, another common problem, people will flush and then shut the power. You don't want to do that. You want that light to go green. If you were at a campground and you were going to be leaving the coach for an extended period of time and didn't want to leave the pump running, God forbid you had an issue, okay, we need that green light. That being said, plenty of RV and marine owners will, their systems will hold vacuum almost indefinitely. In fact, inside our warehouse, we have some displays that we use for boat shows. We put them away usually sometime in January and we don't pull them out till October. Most of them will hold vacuum that whole entire time. Very common problem with vacuum flush, especially in the RV industry. It's misunderstood because it's not gravity, okay? Uh, we're utilizing vacuum to move the waste from the toilet through the vacuum generator and then into your holding tank you have to use marine or RV grade toilet paper, okay? Dometic makes really good toilet paper. It's available in both single ply and two ply. Um, currently it's uh, April of 2021 and getting toilet paper could be a little complicated, all right? So what you'd wanna do if you couldn't get marine toilet paper, you wanna use it very sparingly. I also recommend that you take one sheet Okay, this is nice single ply paper. Put it inside of a mason jar with a little bit of water. You shake it up and down, it should break up into small pieces. Um, be cautious with two ply. What we've seen is the adhesive used for the two plies of paper is not always water soluble and that can create some issues. So common issue that we run into if you need to order parts for your toilet, not for the vacuum pump. Um, somebody breaks the toilet seat, uh, perhaps uh, the base cover, the pedal, 
We need to know what color, and that can be very complicated inside a boat or an RV with imperfect lighting. So a good pro tip, grab a sheet of toilet paper. The white paper is white, and this is white. The other color would be a bone almond. Okay, cell phone pictures, very difficult for us to judge color because of what's called white balance that tells the camera what's white. So having a frame of reference is very helpful. So if you need to order parts for your toilet, quick little pro tip. So now we're gonna get into some of the maintenance. Approximately once a month, depending on how you use your system, you're gonna wanna treat the holding tank. Um, especially if you're gonna be boondocking uh, or somewhere where you're not hooked up to a sanitary connection, or if you are permanently hooked up or semi-permanently hooked up to a sanitary connection, uh, you would still wanna flush your system out. This is Dometic's three-in-one. Um, it's a drop-in bowl and tank treatment, okay? Um, it's gonna help dissolve any waste and prevent waste really from building up inside the system. It actually has a really nice, pleasant lavender scent that everyone <laughs> will also appreciate. So the way these things work is you'll take one of these, place it inside the toilet. You can add a little bit of water. The clear bag will dissolve and it has a little bit of a effervescence action that you'll, you'll see as it starts to dissolve. Now that this is broken down, you can kind of see some of that effervescing. What you're gonna wanna do, gently step on the pedal, let it continue to flow down. We prefer not to use a toilet brush, okay? You can actually shut off your vacuum pump, leave that overnight. That'll sit inside the lines, help to break down any of waste accumulation, just keeps everything clean. Probably something you're gonna wanna do once a year or just before you change your duckbill valves. Flushing the system out with a little bit of our three-in-one will definitely make the job a little less unpleasant. So the reason you don't wanna use a toilet brush is this, this is an abrasive brush, okay? And Dometic's bowl seal, what seals the vacuum, um, has a very fine Teflon coating. And if you can see this chamfer, okay, this sits on top of that half ball like this and you can actually scratch that seal or the half ball and ruin the seal. Replacing the seal is not a big deal, but it's just something we would wanna be cautious of. So what you can do to clean that, if you have any debris or waste build up, you would shut your water pump off. You can take a little bit of paper, use your old kitchen sponge, all right? But you would step on the pedal, a little bit of water is gonna enter the bowl. You can kinda of clean around that seal. All right, drop everything down in there. Grab yourself a little bit more paper. Step on the pedal again. Let everything flow down. Clean the half ball nicely. Then you can turn your water pump back on, flush that down the bowl. We've put in our three in one, we've cleaned the bowl. We have the three-in-one bowl cleaner holding tank treatment right now sitting in our line, okay? So before we go down and change our duckbill valves, we're gonna wanna turn our vacuum pump back on, let that clear through, okay? We're gonna wait until we get a green light, which under normal circumstances should take anywhere from about 10 to 75 seconds, depending on the length of run. This is a 2018 Bounder medium use. If you live aboard full time, probably gonna have to do them every six to 12 months. Usually our liveaboards get about a year out of a set of duckbill valves and about uh, a year on a bowl seal and a half ball. But um, I can't stress enough how important it is to do preventative maintenance because God forbid you have an issue, it is going to happen the potluck dinner weekend on 4th of July. And if the bellows fails or your duckbill valves aren't working, you have a severe leak, depending on the model, it could be pretty difficult to access. Nobody wants to clean up that mess, all right? So I can't stress enough how important it is to do preventative maintenance. Dometic's 3-in-1 is the best choice to use within your sanitation system. You don't wanna use any products containing petroleum 
or bleach. You don't want to use those powdered abrasive cleaners or bleach cleaners. You don't want to use any of those pine scented cleaners. It could potentially harm the ductbill valves and the rubber product or even the bowl seal within the system. 3-in-1 was designed to be used with VacuFlush. It's the only product you should use. So we have our green light. We're gonna step on the pedal, get a good rim wash. And we'll let that paper go down. You can hear the vacuum pump gurgling inside the toilet, which is good. Everything's nice and clean. We'll let that regenerate vacuum. And then we'll go down, change the duckbill valves. First, we're gonna take a look at how to change the bowl seal. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is shut the vacuum off, shut your water pump off, drain all the excess pressure out. You can pick a faucet, you can do it through the toilet. Pick your preference. You're gonna to have to remove the clamshell base cover. Most of the Fleetwoods have this 06 or a short base model. And underneath the pedal, you'll see there's a very small white clip. So if you get your fingers in here, you kind of pry that down. Usually you pop a hole in your glove. <laughs> you'll remove the clamshell cover. It's gonna have the model number of your toilet over here. That can be very useful information. You're gonna unclip that right there, okay? A little difficult to do, but not impossible. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your water pressure is drained out of the system, okay? Nobody likes a mess. Next, you grab a 5 16 nut driver. You're not gonna be able to see this because the camera's too tight in here, but along the back, there's a large hose clamp. You loosen the hose clamp, okay? These are two half clamps. You slide them out of the way. Okay, you're probably gonna wanna get yourself a little rag. You might have a little bit of a dribble. Ooh, we had a little vacuum. So in the back, there's a, something called a vacuum breaker. You have to wiggle that out, and it can be a little difficult, but just keep going left and right. Make sure you have Wheaties for breakfast. So once you have the toilet, you don't wanna crush your half ball. So you pick the toilet up, just gently put it on the side. Like I said, a little dribble, but we're prepared for that. Okay, this is the hose clamp that we discussed earlier. And we wanna inspect this half ball, okay? You can feel it with your fingers. You wanna make sure that there's no big nicks, dings, dents, imperfections. All right, and this one is in perfect condition. If it's not, we're going to want to take the pedal off and change the half ball out. This particular coach, we're not going to have to do that. Get our new bowl seal. Very important, only buy the Dometic one. Uh, you'll find some internet retailer selling an aftermarket one that's not Teflon coated and it won't work. <laughs> so this side up is very important. So we have this little centering notch. Again, the bottom is chamfered. So this side up, very important. And then we take our other piece, which is the rubber cushion. Okay. Now on this toilet, when we took it off, the bowl seal actually stuck to the bottom of the toilet. Okay, so we would wanna take the old seal off, wipe everything up, make sure it's nice and clean. Looks like this is BD639. Don't know why that's on there, but <laughs> sometimes you'll actually find the uh, the serial model number of the toilet. So this pretty heavy bowl, you don't want to throw your back out. It's very important that you don't let the china, which could be rough, hit your new half ball or your old half ball. You set it up there like that, and then you want to come center it, make sure it looks aesthetic, nice aesthetically. Everything's nice and square. Now, this, the mistake I just made was the half clamp. You wanna put this half clamp on before you put the toilet. So I'm gonna put this back on the side. I put the screw wherever is convenient. I rest it on there like so. Okay, 
Okay. Center everything up nicely. You'll reinsert your vacuum breaker before you mount it down because it could be a little difficult. Going in is always easier than coming back out. So we got that there. Center it back up. These have two protrusions. They're gonna touch in the front and not in the back. If you're up in a northern climate and it's really cold, pop these things in some hot water, hit them with a hair dryer. Sometimes you can have difficulty putting them back together. So when I do this, it's gonna be difficult to get a good camera angle, so just deal with us. I fish them around the bottom, right? So I usually put the opposite side of the toilet in first, snake it around. We have the second one. Put that in there. And the trick is to make the hose clamp tight enough so that it puts pressure on it and holds it in place. Okay, I want that screw in the back. These are gonna eventually touch in the front, but not in the back. So after some technical difficulties, I got it touching in the front, nice and open in the back. Torque spec on this is uh, 60 inch pounds. I'm not putting an inch pound torque meter on here. So in my opinion, nice and snug by hand. After you got it all tightened up, double check your work. Make sure everything's nice and centered. You want to clean wipe everything down. Okay. Double check operation of that. Ensure your vacuum breaker is in properly. It's basically how you change a bowl seal. We're gonna put the uh, clamshell cover back on, which again could be a little tricky, but it's not that bad. A couple things to talk about. With the winter events of February, 2021, and the freeze we had down south, we have a lot of customers calling us saying they had freezes and leaks. Two things can leak on your toilet the vacuum breaker in the back or the water valve behind the pedal. Okay, and the, I don't wanna say the trick, but a good measure is my toilet leaks all the time, usually a water valve. My toilet leaks when I flush, it could be your vacuum breaker because the water travels down the supply hose. And we have all those parts if you need them. If you have questions, you can always give us a call. So common upgrade request we get is, can I get a slow close seat? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to change your seat. Basically, you come over here to the top, pull the hinge covers off, all right? And then you're gonna reach underneath, take a number two Phillips head, loosen up the screws. Everyone that utilizes this toilet has fantastic aim because uh, there's no residue back there. I have a six-year-old at home who uh, likes to paint our bathroom yellow. So. <laughs> now these are gonna be a little bit torqued up. Okay, so you just kinda have to work with it. As you bolt the toilet down, the hinges then will relax. You're gonna take your new hardware. Just kind of center everything up. You tighten that up. You're going to want to make sure everything is nice and aligned. And then you can go ahead and enjoy your new slow close seat. So we're going to jump inside the under bunk compartment. Hopefully, again, preventative maintenance. But if we do have some sort of catastrophic failure, perhaps a significant clog, you can go to the big box orange store and for just about 40 bucks, pick up your bucket head vac. These are actually pretty good. They're pretty powerful and that'll help you clean up the mess. Um, we can even use this inside the head if we needed to, if there was some kind of clog. But we're gonna pop open the compartment here, get the camera set up, get the best angle we can, show you guys how to remove the pump it will be possible to do it in place, but just so I can show everybody, we're probably gonna pull it out and bring it into the shop. I'll show you guys in there. What you're gonna wanna do is remove the pump. It's very important that you shut the power off to the pump. Kill your house batteries. We don't want anybody to get hurt. We don't want anyone uh, to get shocked. 
So you can disconnect these two connectors here. I highly recommend removing the pump completely from uh, the compartment on this particular model of Bounder 2018. It's in a really nice accessible location. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this out, bring it in the shop and go from there. The big secret to working on your sanitation system, classical music. It, it just makes you feel like you're in another world. The trick to getting this hose off, take a heat gun, gently warm it up a little bit, take a hot rag with boiling water, it'll soften up the vinyl hose and you'll be able to get that hose off. To film how to rebuild this vacuum pump inside or, or even do it on a dirty pump's a little bit unpleasant. So we're fortunate enough, I have a brand new unit. This is exactly what you would have inside your Fleetwood. Um, Fleetwood only ever bought one particular model from Dometic, so all the Fleetwoods have the same. Uh, vacuum generator and that's this tank and the pump those parts together are called the vacuum generator um, This is the pump and we have the tank This is a vacuum switch Behind it is the inlet. So this would be effluent and waste coming from your toilet goes into this tank and then as it's rebuilding its vacuum it gets discharged through here into the holding tank Okay so to remove it, usually there's four bolts. Okay, bolting it down somewhere. Um, it's tight depending on which model you have to work on. So we loosen those four bolts. Okay, you can wiggle the pump, it comes out. You'd unplug that Deutsch connector, um, your other two connections, cheat. You kind of bend this relay out, slide it down that comes off, be very cautious. Again, preventative maintenance. I can't stress enough how important it is for you to do preventative maintenance. While everything is working properly, flush the toilet three, four, five, six times. I like even doing a couple of dry flushes, okay? That helps get this empty. No one likes liquid in their uh, under bunk compartments. So this is the pump. I'm gonna just put this aside. Okay, this is your low profile vacuum generator pump. With Fleetwood, it only had the newer style motor. But something I wanna show you, if you take a number one Phillips head, loosen these two screws, slide this over. You see here we have our bellows. Now, really around 2017 and earlier, you may see a white shaft, this one is gray. Those are poison, get them out. They're not lasting as long as they would like, a Dometic would like to see. So they came out with this gray um, bellows. Uh, Duckbill valves are the number one maintenance item. Again, full time, gonna wanna do them once a year. Part time, every two to six years or seasons, um, depending on use. Number one maintenance item is the four inch and a half duckbill valves. You have two on either side of the pump. Okay, grab yourself a little channel locks. Try not to mar it up too much. Okay. Gonna have one in here. So you got one here fitting, whoa. And then the second duckbill valve is in there. I don't really care if they're east-west, north-south, as long as they're both facing away from the tank. We had that accumulator tank. Okay, and then your other two. are there. So you have 
all of your fittings here. That's a basic maintenance. If you want to get a little bit more involved, do a little bit more of a maintenance, we can take the bellows out, okay? So in order to do that, you need a 5 16 uh, nut driver or socket. Um, for the sake of time, I'm using an electric screwdriver, a battery screwdriver. Never want to use an impact gun. You could do damage. This has an adjustable chuck, so I don't over tighten anything. So you take a, I like to use a 3 8 ratchet with a three quarter socket to pull the shoulder bolt. You're just gonna pop it like that. Just use caution because sometimes the bellows will move back and it can hurt you. Okay. So when you change your bellows out, you're gonna take off the eight 516 screws from the pump top to the pump bottom or body. And for you RV owners, this was originally a marine system. So all the hardware is stainless. So if you drop one, your magnetic stick is not really gonna help too much. <laughs> okay. Uh, very gently. Okay. So here we have a bellows. Two bellows shocks or bellows clamps they're called, right? And this is your pump body. Now, if you're live aboard, there's a lot of calcification and mineral buildup. Use at your own risk. Muriatic acid will help you dissolve all that mineral buildup. Um, kind of a nasty job. Still recommend hiring a pro. But just to show you quickly, reassembly, okay? We have a couple of rebuild kits. We'll pull those up here and show them to you. Um, but now that I got the parts here up on the workbench, got the bellows, bellows chocks. All right, just make sure everything's nice and clean. They only go on one way, very common. I see people trying to put bellows chocks on the incorrect way, okay? So they only go on one way. Um, they should come close to making a complete circle. They should go on pretty easily, all right? You're gonna take that, you wanna make sure that the shaft of that bellows is aligned, okay, with this inlet neck, okay, nice and straight. You'll press that in. You're gonna take your brand new square gasket. We usually provide a little bit of silicone grease that you put on there, grease it up, ensure this channel is nice and clean and that there's no debris. You'll put your square gasket in. I then take my bellows O-ring, put a little bit of grease on there as well, make sure it's nice and clean. And that rests just inside the shoulder of the bellows, okay? Make sure you put your pump top on the right way. It doesn't really matter if you put it on backwards, but um, so that's gonna go on. Now, when I press this on once, I'm gonna maintain pressure on it, okay? and then I'm gonna put two screws in it. Sometimes if it jumps out of place, that O-ring around the bellows can move and not sit when you put your pump back together. Okay, so got two in, now I'm comfortable letting it go. I'll put the remaining six screws in. You don't have to, but it is my preference to go in a little bit of a star pattern. Okay. You get hardware if you buy the whole motor kit. Washers go on the top screws. 
not on the bottom. Gonna put your motor on. A uh, quick little pro tip, I like to keep my eccentric on my motor down at either five or seven o'clock, just makes it much easier. So you can turn that with a, a wrench or a channel locks. This is soft aluminum, so we don't want to strip it. Now this third one, sometimes it could be a little tricky. And again, they're non-magnetic, so sometimes I get two or three of them going, and then I'll move on to the fourth. You would want to make those top two pretty tight. Okay. For my shoulder bolt, I like to put a little bit of grease on, on the shaft, okay? Just helps to keep things quiet. It can be a little difficult to get that in. Okay. And you just take a three quarter inch socket. Now when you get to here, it's gonna start to turn. So what I do is just go here, give it a good pop, one more for good measure. I know I'm good. It's basically all there is up there. You can put your cover back on. Okay. Make these nice and snug. This is just really a dust cover, keeps out large debris. So if it breaks or you don't have one, it's not the end of the world. Now we're gonna reassemble the duckbill valves so you can jump back in here if you are only doing duckbill valves. We don't care, north, south, east, west, as long as they're all facing this little arrow down here pointing in the direction of flow, okay? Spec on all of these fittings is a quarter turn hand, excuse me, quarter turn past hand tight. What does that mean? It's all relative. Here on a workbench, that's all it needs, okay? If you're working in a compartment where someone's holding your feet and you're wearing a nose clip because it stinks and your bellows broke or something failed because you didn't listen to me about preventative maintenance. So I can't get as much leverage on there. So this one, I, I will put a little bit of a, some additional leverage on it, but that's it. We do not need to go bad. Quite a bit of silicone grease on there is a good idea. So for the two discharge duckbill valves, I'm gonna assemble that that way. This one I'm gonna just put in there. And that's it. Now, when you put this back together, okay, it's going to be very important you flush at least one full bowl of water down because very common people say, ah, I changed my duckbill valves, it still doesn't work right. They need to be wet to work, okay? So don't forget that little relay, all right? And that's how you put that back together. Um, we showed you before getting that hose off can be a little difficult. Okay, you may want to use the heat gun, makes it much easier. All right, so as you saw, we just rebuilt the pump. Now we're gonna go put it back into place. Okay. Basically, we've gone, we've changed the ductbill valves, inspected everything, we've reattached the hoses, and now we turn her back on. Hopefully it doesn't leak in my face. <laughs> and we're gonna flush a full bowl of water down, make sure the pump runs and shuts off. So, getting in here, I'm checking, making sure there are no leaks. The pump's running, regenerating vacuum, and always wet the duckbill valves out after you change them. So, I'm gonna take a couple quick minutes to talk to you guys about replacement items and rebuilding parts, okay? First up, we have our low profile vacuum pump. This is plug and play. Awesome option if you live full time in your RV or just have to have replacement parts, okay? It's gonna come with the Deutsch connector on it. Again, 
plug and play, simple. I'm a simple guy. Um, the only thing you're gonna have to do, which you should be aware of is the relay would mount right here, okay? So you're gonna have to swap over the bracket for the shutdown relay. Now the purpose of that relay is if the holding tank is full, it cuts the power off going to the vacuum pump. This vacuum pump could make up to 18 PSI of pressure, and that could potentially explode or damage your holding tank and create a huge mess. Um, there's also a couple other wires here that send some of the signal to the monitoring panel inside the head. So these pumps are available from us, either brand new, rebuilt, or you can even send me your pump and I'll rebuild it for you. Uh, I prefer you go to a dealer locally. We're all about supporting local businesses, local dealers, okay? But if there's no one local to you, um, we'd be more than happy to help you out with that, all right? Moving on from there, we have what we call our major rebuild kit, right? Gonna get a brand new motor, okay? Not gonna have the Deutsch connector, but um, we have heat shrink bug connectors if you'd like. We can get you those, uh, or hopefully have a spare parts kit on board that may have some electrical connectors. You're gonna get the new gray bellows, your bellows chocks, your four inch and a half duckbill valves, as well as the proper O-rings. You're gonna get the new shoulder bolt and the hardware for the motor. Great option again, liverboards, full-time people, large family. Um, we also include a packet of silicone grease. They put those on the O-rings, good grease. Um, really helps everything seal properly. Um, moving down from there, we have what we call our minor rebuild kit, right? So you're gonna get a bellows, you're gonna get the proper O-rings, your four inch and a half duckbill valves. We also include a packet of the uh, silicone grease. Um, at minimum, if, if you're really hard cruising, I like going with a minor rebuild kit minimum, you know. Um, something to talk about while we're here, duckbill valves. There are a couple of aftermarket ductile valves. We have had several customers in probably the last couple of months give us a call. Oh, I changed my ductile valves, doesn't work, this, that, and the other thing. And so, okay, well, where'd you get your ductile valves from? Well, this online marketplace. Oh, did it come in the Dometic packaging? Well, I don't remember. So we take it out and we look and they're not the factory ductile valves. They're not going to work properly. They're made from an inferior material and they are thinner. We're Dometic's largest distributor for vacuum flush. We can get you the right parts the first time on time, get you back on the road of the water, okay? So that pretty much covers most of your low profile vacuum generator rebuild parts. Um, yeah, things are available a la carte, but um, from requests from our customers, we put these packages together. If you should need any parts, please give us a shout, visit us on the web, um, your support helps us make more content like this. And if you have any questions, definitely feel free. Like I said, give us a call. Uh, we have a chat function on our website that you can use to contact us. And, you know, we'll get you back up on the road or on the water. Thanks. Mm -hmm.